This is Brad Caleb PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For we continue to work and dig on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. If you ask me why are you doing this? At the moment of this videotaping, it is November or December the 1st, 2020. Technically, I was born in 1950 June, that makes me 70 years plus a half a year almost. Looking at the time that has moved so fast, I always laugh when I heard people talking when they were older, this and this and this happened in their lives. But when you can talk back and think back at 20 years ago and 30 years ago, 50 years ago, and now I start to remember things from 70 years ago, it gets to a point that you realize what am I leaving behind for my kids and their children? And is it my time? Because other people dying at age 60, 50, 55. And thinking about all those different things makes me become aware why I became a biohacker. Early in life, I was a biohacker because I was facing something that was not fun. I was paralyzed. It started with an ear infection, it became a facial paralysis, and before I knew it, I was down for months and months. I couldn't walk, I could hardly talk, and I was told I would have to live as a speech impediment. And when you are only 16 years of age and you go through that, while well, I just buried my mom when I was six years old, those things have a tremendous impact on you. So health became a priority for me. When my wife and I got married in 1976, our little one was born in um, June of 1977. 1976, yes, year, almost a year later. And it was an amazing time period. But when January the 30th, 1978, 10 o'clock, my wife called me because I had my office upstairs. And I came down, I picked up my little boy, and he looked so lifeless. And we rushed him to the hospital, and there was no hospital close by, so we rushed him to the doctor. And the doctor only could say, sorry, sir, your son has just expired. He died in my arms. I tell you, those are things that don't scare me, but it definitely changed me completely. My outlook on life became completely different. You know why? Life is a precious thing. And abuse of history, puddling of the puddle of deception, 32, the dark brotherhood as it became a state religion, had an impact on my life, which I was not aware of at the time. Beliefs and other things of beliefs were put in my path because I was told by the experienced people, the people with degrees, the pastors, the priests, 
the people that knew it at seminary, Bible schools, universities, colleges, wherever we went or I went. I must admit I lost studying, so I studied most of my life and I continue to study even now. But the reality is that people and their opinions have an impact on our lives. That is such force that most of us don't realize what is happening. And that is why I deal with the Christian oxymoron exposed in restorative justice, PMS versus PMS 32. And the PMS stands for the sight from God who created us, physical. He created us with a mental capacity and he created us with a spiritual aspect. And then versus satanic approach who uses PMS as politics. He uses money and he uses a spirituality or religion to control the people. And most of us are not even aware because we were told. And that is the reason why I make those videos. First and foremost, it was a release for myself because as I developed an, an understanding about something that I thought I knew an awful lot about, I realized that the more I know, the less I realize I understand. Because God's power, he, his infinite beauty, his holiness is so awesome that when you really come to understand God, you realize you are nothing in his eyes. And yet he loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to succeed. And he wants you to live eternal. Now, when that happens, and when we start to get that understanding, would you love to know more about what the dark brotherhood means that became a state religion? Let's check this out for a moment. I do agree that it is always a challenge to come out with a video that makes sense. And in reality, this is a life so lifelong scenario. Abuse of history tells you already that it goes over a longer period of time. But in our case, we have to go back all the way to the time of Jesus and then before. Now, some of you that might not like history is just simply because you never understood what an impact it has on what you're doing today. Today you are going to work, for instance, say that you're between 20 and 30 years of age. You're going to work because you didn't go to school and you have to paint and you have to do something with your hands. Now, it is nothing wrong with working with your hands. Earning a living today is always better with your hands because your mind can sometimes be affected by circumstances like a pandemic. And then all of a sudden you are dismissed. But if you work with your hands and you have a skill that everyone needs, then it doesn't matter what day of time it is. People need that skill. So that helps. But from a perspective of income earning, that means how much money can you make with that skill? That is sometimes a little bit different because the more you study, usually the higher your income. Now, I've done both. I've worked with my hands, I studied, and I have done hit a couple of skills. I made an average income of $5 a month working for free for a practical Bible school, a missionary office. It was my ideal to work with them because the power of God was moving and everything was awesome. Not realizing that I was being abused by being told I had to learn to trust the Lord. That's why I only got five dollars. Well, I was in a in time period with the skills I had. I could make over two thousand dollars a month or at that time guilders. So when I became a merchant marine, my skills went up. Do you think so? No way. 
because the same skill set I had when I worked at a missionary office for so long, for almost three, oh, and I got a place to stay right beside the toilet. Literally, there was a little closet there where I could put my bed down and sleep. But the reality was that with the chains, my skills didn't go up per se, but the time chains and the chains of environment. I started traveling all over the world. I had an opportunity to get to know other people. And with that, my mind started to expand. I remember that my hair was at that time like this, the Edwin Hawker singers, you know, uh, the big um, <laughs> hair dude that was in. And I was listening to a group of teachers. They were Buddhists, Buddhist monks. And they taught me about life from their perspective. I also know that when my little boy passed away in my arms, I was told that that was the reason why he died. Because I'd been in all those temples, Thai temples, and places where many people don't come. Nowadays it's a little easier, but in the early 70s, people hardly had a chance to go and travel all those places because it was prohibitive, very expensive. So reality is that when we change our minds, and this is where the concept is, so you learn to work with your hands, you have a skill, but if you learn to use your mind and your hands, then something else happens. So after the death of our boy, my wife and I, we wanted to have a change of scenery. I was doing very well, but it was not satisfying and the constant fights about more, performing more, 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 more. Doing very well means we had a 12 room house living right beside the Minnesota of Finance and um, having a foundation that we spoke and worked in all kinds of countries. It was great traveling, but my little boy left a void. And when I spoke about that in Toronto, Ontario, that was in 1979, while I was on my way to Korea, I realized something that maybe Canada would be a place for us to get started all over again and have that peace so that my wife didn't have to cry her eyes out in a 12 bedroom apartment or place. See, having big places doesn't mean that you're happy. Happiness has something to do with the relationship that you have with your partner, with your family, with your friends, with your people that you love and care for. So what is a biohacker? A biohacker is a person that is interested in his life, in his health. But I come to the conclusion that just being a buff, in other words, you are well trained, your muscles are showing and everything is great. If you don't develop your spirit, there is a lack. So the biohacker that I talk to and talk with are people that are mentally ready, but also physically changing. They are interested in the health. And health means that you at an age of 50, 60, 70 or 80 are still healthy to do everything possible. There are people that are 120 years of age, physical, very energetic people, people that can do everything. And why is that possible? Because they are balanced in life. Now, I started out with the history of the puddle of deception, the dark brotherhood as it became a state religion. You know by now that I am talking about the body of Christ. The body of Christ has had a very peculiar history. And every time that I study history, I go back to the basics. What are they saying? They're saying that they're based on just Jesus. Yet, how come that I have to kill people in order to make them do what I wanted to do? Uh-oh, what are you talking about? Well, when Yeshua HaMashiach, that most people know as Jesus, came on this earth, this was around 30. Have we ever figured out where did Jesus come from? Who was Jesus? Oh yes, he was Joseph and Maria and they had a little stall and he was born as a little babe and we have Christmas. Is that true? I 
tell you that in my experience, and when I say my experience, talking with people from all kinds of different religions, Muslim people told me about real Christmas. You say Muslim people? Yes. You see, my wife comes out of a Muslim community. Her mom was a devout Muslim and she was not enforcing anything, but she allowed us to get married. And when I say allowed, she was happy. <laughs> but one thing I do know and understand this, when I talk personally with people that are very devout Muslim people, they can tell me a lot about Christmas. Because Christmas, the way it is celebrated, is celebration of the longest and the shortest night. It has nothing to do with Jesus. You see, Jesus came from a very special area. Those people were connected to Enoch. I don't know if you remember who Enoch was. Enoch was the seventh generation after Adam. Adam and Eve had children, and they had children, and they had children. So the seventh generation was Enoch, or Enoch. And Enoch was a man that really feared the Lord. And Adam and Eve must have told him, or their fathers, because Adam lived a long time. So it is possible that Adam himself taught his great, great, great grandson about the time that he walked with God in the Garden of Eden. And during that time, Adam shared certain secrets. And one of the secrets was how to stay alive and healthy and live a long time. And why did he share that? Because it was normal to live 500, 600 or a thousand years. Today, we have learned, our young people learned to die or kill themselves at age 10, 12, 20, 30 years of age, young people that are dying. And now with the pandemic, we have more people dying than ever. Or is that true? See, the emphasis is put on a pandemic. But in reality, and I'm going only back to the numbers from the United States, I checked out how many people died normally. 2.8 million people per year have been dying since 1958. So I was eight years old, so 2.8 million people. Now, from the pandemic so far in less than half a year, 265,000 people have died. Folks, that is a tremendous increase because all the other situations happened too. Gunshot, gun wounds, knife fights, drinking, accidents, heart attacks, all those things happen in an imperfect world. So if in the United States, about 320 million people live, 2.8 million people die of all kinds of different diseases. And on top of that, every single day, there is an increase of death. You wonder what is wrong with our society? Because we can protect ourselves. So then we go back and check out what is the political situation? Now, the political situation in the United States is scary. When I say that, someone will say, yeah, but you don't love Trump. It has nothing to do with Trump. It has something to do with the body of Christ. They call themselves the believers. And this is where the dark brotherhood comes in. Because it became a state religion in the year 325. Christianity was never around. It was the followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, the way, the truth, and the light. There was one God, and that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And when Yeshua, Jesus, when he did what God had requested, we were therefore now entitled. Restorative justice took place because God, the Almighty God, could finally relate again because the sacrifice had been brought. And you say, what are we talking about? Well, one of the reasons why Adam and Eve could not stay in the paradise was for the simple reason they had not yet become like God. They were created according to his image. But when they sided with Satan, automatically 
immediately. The decision was made a second later or the same moment. They blocked themselves out of the spiritual development. And as a society, we have been struggling and with the, the building of the tor Tower of Babel, the Babylonian Tower, as some of you know, something happened, a confusion of language, because God saw that they could do anything they put their mind to. And what was that? Those people still spoke the language of God. What are you talking about? See, God speaks in a different language. He speaks in the language of the Almighty. And what is that? Let's check this out. You see, at the time that Yeshua HaMashiach walked on this earth and he worked on the release and the separation of the children of God, something took place that many of us don't realize. See, the importance of having a correct understanding helps because your foundation is built. And when I say your foundation, everything you do in life is basically built on a belief system. You believe to be right in your choice of work. Why? Because your teacher, your professors, or the people who shared with you their understanding over the work that you're doing, they were examples for you. So when we got a belief system shoved in us, and I call it shoved because I was a little baby boy, and I got a slap on my bum and I was a Roman Catholic till my mom passed away when I was six years old. I had now four, uh, total four brothers and sisters. But the amazing part was my mom could not be buried in holy ground, as the church called it. And automatically, C was not allowed because my dad was not a Roman Catholic. Question mark. How in the world is that possible? If God loves us so much, then why is there such a difference in what you do believe, if you belong to this group or belong to that group? It happened to me now several times. The first time I got excommunicated, I was very upset. Wow, I cannot get into the, the heaven, in the poof, whatever it was that this church believed in. The second time it happened, I went to seminary and I had lots of questions because the process that I went through, opened my eyes for so many things contrary to what, to what we were taught, that I realized there is more to it. And why am I not hearing about this? And so, big deal, now I can't go into heaven according to this religion. And then the third religion, supposedly. Now when I say religion, it's a belief because the basic belief was all the same. See, the reality is that we all call ourselves different we consider ourselves special and as we realize that in general we all believe the same based on the same lies we were told you get concerned so therefore it is so important to understand the brotherhood the dark brotherhood because there was a spawn when Jesus was upset with someone he called them out See, most people don't believe that Jesus got very upset, but there was a time that Jesus portrayed the Jews as the spawn of the devil. And he didn't say the Jews were wrong. He spoke to the priests. Now, who are those priests? They were Pharisees and Sadducees. There were about 3,000 of them. But the followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, they were the Essenes, the Carmelites, the people that lived together and were searching the word of God. And when Yeshua was 
chosen as the deliverer of the word of God, they followed Yeshua. They were the first followers of Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus. That meant that they were the first believers. They accepted Jesus because he was born as a man, but he was endowed with a very special spirit, the spirit of God. And when Jesus called them the spawn of the devil, and those people kept on pushing and pushing, then in 325, that was a time, 300 years, almost 300 years after Jesus had moved on and had given the authority to his disciples, they got murdered, they got killed, they got maimed, they got thrown in the arena because they followed the way, the truth, and the light. And as we come to understand history correct, we find out that this devil's palm became a Christian. Because Christianity was not because you follow Jesus Christ. Christianity was based on what Plato, so many years, hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, had discovered. See, when you were a Christian, you were a follower of a deity, of a goddess, of a god. You were not a follower of Jesus Christ. And it was implemented by a man that couldn't care less about God because he himself considered himself God. He was the emperor of Rome. And they kept on killing people till eventually there were only people in charge of the first believers, the first century believers that just said, sir, whatever you want, we'll sign. And they made an agreement, a proposal whereby the emperor of Rome would determine who God was. The emperor of Rome was a God himself and he prayed to the sun God. So the father and the son, S-U-N or O-N, was just immaterial. And as he brought in paganism, as he brought in Christmas and Easter and all the celebrations that they do, what is not necessary and not required, on the, the way, the truth, and the light, it became a far cry of what Yeshua had started, a restorative justice. And as we are drifting further apart from the truth, we will see what we see in the United States, where a president acts like a moron, is a moron, becomes a sociopath, or was a sociopath, at least he was a narcissist. And then the man of God, the body of Christ, Paula White, a woman that has a tremendous following, and Kenneth Copeland, a John Hakey, a Pat Robertson, and Seth Roth, and many more, supporting a man because he promised them something because they don't understand the philosophy of God because God said, this is what I want you to do. When I say philosophy, it was a law. There is one God. And when God speaks about the new Jerusalem, he is talking about your heart, where the kingdom of God is. We don't have to follow a Zionist belief where they want the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. I understand why they want that. It is important to have your own country. But you folks, the body of Christ, you have to really reevaluate what you're doing. Because what you're promoting right now, I tell you up front, I work as Brer Kayla PhD, but my, na my name is Robert Solovelt. And yes, folks, I'm willing to meet you and discuss this. But most likely you know what I'm talking about. You just felt it was more comfortable getting the riches in from this world, preaching the gospel and missing the point that we are blaspheming God. And brother, I urge you, please, come back to the truth, the way and the light. Because if we follow the way and we become the prodigal son or daughter that remembers this is what it was like to be with the Father, to live for eternity. 
to live the life that God intended us to have, not the misery and the sadness and the whatever schemes they had in the White House. Folks, we are able to turn the pages back. We can go back and we can stop the dark brotherhood as it became a state religion and repent and go back to the way, the truth and the light. And why I share the word biohacker is because I am interested in life, not only physical, but also spiritual. And when you can tweak yourself and willing to say, listen, what if it is true? What if I miss the boat? A healthy moron? Wow, I'm impressed. You have nothing. But if you return to the way, the truth and the light, now your life will be turned around because you will walk into eternity. God is an awesome God. He loves you and so do I. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they will do. God bless you all.
Thank you.